You missed that one, right? Uh, Star Wars? I couldn't even get a damn audition for Star Wars. You mentioned on the walk this morning your mentor, George Lucas. Yeah. Tell about auditioning for him six times and then the one-on-one -on -one meeting. Everybody my age was going in for auditions on, on this. It was, you know, it had a crazy title, American Graffiti. But at this point, I hadn't read a script and it was described as a musical. I went in for my first meeting and uh, I met George. I did say, I, I hear this is a musical and I, I know I haven't read a script yet or anything, but I wanna let you know, I, I know I did The Music Man, but they must have thought it was cute that I couldn't sing because I'm really not a very good singer. And he said, nobody sings, nobody has to sing. It's, it's a musical, but nobody sings. When I finally read the script, I still didn't understand why he was calling it a musical. And later I realized he had written um, every scene with a specific uh, 50s rock and roll song in mind. And the, the sort of the soundtrack of the movie was what made it a musical to him. But it, again, that's George with his lateral thinking. I mean, he's just an outlier. Finally, I was teamed with uh, Cindy Williams, who sadly just passed away. And, and we won, won the role, but it was our sixth audition over a period of about six months. And uh, I asked George about it later, and he said, yeah, it took me that long to find the cars, too. Uh, <laughs> so again, he was looking at this thing holistically. He was creating a world. We were a part of it. But he didn't want to direct us too much. He wanted us to be very naturalistic. And I told him then that I'd been accepted to USC Film School and that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And he said, oh, great. He said, make sure you study animation, because it's, that's pure filmmaking. Animation is pure filmmaking. And he said, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry about the actors and things like that. And I thought, well, this is kind of a crazy thing to say to one of your actors uh, in your one meeting before you're gonna go off and shoot the movie. But, you know, George wasn't censoring himself. Uh, he was trying to be helpful. <laughs> You've said that George never quite figured out how to talk to actors. How so? George is very result-oriented and he has something in his head and he counted on the actors to get it there, but he didn't think of himself as a performance whisperer. And yet you look at the performances in American Graffiti and they're very, very cutting edge. I mean, they were, they were so honest and that honesty was just what that movie uh, needed, just as the sort of the um, faster, more intense direction that he gave everybody over and over again in Star Wars. That was his main direction, faster and more intense. But that was right for Star Wars. So he, I think more than anything, great eye for casting. You missed that one, right? Uh, Star Wars? I couldn't even get a damn audition for Star Wars. But well, you didn't think anything of it when he first brought well, it up to you, right? I was saying to George, well, do you know what you want to do next? And he said, maybe, I kind of. I'm just starting to kind of write the story for it. And I said, well, what would it be? And he said, well, it would be science fiction, you know, but it would use all the special effects and the technical breakthroughs that you could see in 2001 Space Odyssey. So I'd want to do what Kubrick did, but, but I wanted to be fast. And I wanted to be, you know, full of action, um, kind of like Flash Gordon. And, uh, and that's about all he said, and sounded really terrible to me. <laughs> <laughs> really lame. That man of vision clearly knew that I didn't fit into his vision because I couldn't even, not only did I not, not to get, get to read the script, I couldn't even get in for an audition.